It's late February here in Maine. Today's about uh, 18, 19 degrees right now. Temperature dropping as we get closer to dark. Hunter and I decided to go for a day hike. And uh, we got about 20 inches of fresh snow uh, since I was gone on this last trip. And I uh, thought we'd come out today and explore the woods and have a good time. There's my trusted companion, Hunter. How you doing, buddy? Huh? And uh, even though it's in the teens, uh, when you're hiking along in deep snow and carrying a backpack, and your body puts out a lot of heat, and uh, I have a wool hat in my backpack here with me today if I need it, and probably when I get close to dark, we'll put it on. But as you're hiking along, uh, at least for me, I get plenty warm and I keep that hat off of my head to release that heat so that I don't get too sweaty. And uh, maintaining uh, dry clothing in winter woods is important. And so that's why there's no hat on the head as of now, but it'll be on later, I assure you. Hunter just got groomed and he's missing a lot of his fur, which he's probably wishing he had today. But I don't think he's minding so far. How you doing today, Hunter? How you doing, buddy? You my hiking buddy? Hunter and I have found an area that we're going to set up camp. The sun's setting. And uh... Of course, anytime you're in the woods, and especially in the winter, you want to allow yourself plenty of time to set up your camp and get a fire going. And uh, this is a good area. There's tons of trees here and uh, a lot of dead wood on the sides of these trees for firewood. There's a place here that I'm going to take my axe and clear the branches off for a seat, and we'll get started. Hunter! Hunter! There he is. It's a good idea when you stop to set up camp to put your backpack up off the ground to keep it dry and place it at a working height that's convenient for you. And also when you pack your pack, organize it the same way each and every time you go out. That way when you need your tools or your fire kit or whatever you're going to be needing out of your pack, you'll know exactly right where it's at. In this case, I'm going to be using my tools and they're always right here. I'm going to take the branches off of that and uh, that'll be a nice place to sit down and I'll build a fire right about where Hunter's sitting. In the winter in my backpack, I carry this uh, little product, it's called a snow claw. It's got little places there for handles and for some snow removal. Also functions in a second fashion as a splint where you need it. But uh, I'm going to use it right now to clear out the area where I'm going to build the fire. Let's walk through how you build a fire in the winter. Uh, first of all, select a location. I picked this area here because of this log, which is just the right height for me to sit down and warm up by the fire. And then this area right in front of me, I took my snow claw and I shoveled as much as that snow and ice away as possible so that when I build the fire it doesn't sink down too deeply. And uh, you know, in the winter you can create fire and if you don't have a clear area, uh, the melting snow and the steam and the fire sinking, etc., all can be a problem in keeping your fire going and staying warm and you don't want that. All right, so I've selected my location. I've cleared the area. When I delimb the trees here, I put them all here in a pile right where I'm going to start. And uh, let's get a fire and get started. 
Number one, pick your location. I picked this not only because there was a place for a seat, but because there's all kinds of dry wood readily available to start a fire. Step two, after picking where you're going to build your fire, one pace in front of that, prep the area by removing the snow and the ice and get as close to bare ground as you possibly can. Step three, get some dry wood, take your saw, cut it up in pieces and make a dry base from which you can build your fire on. Step four in building your fire is to have your wood prepped. Notice that I've got a pile of wood smaller than the diameter of a pencil. That's always what you use to start your fire. We're going to light a tinder bundle with that flint and steel. Then we'll add the small wood to that and carefully get that started. And then after you've got that started and the fire is going well, then you can add your secondary wood to it and then you can build from there. That's a traditional Hudson Bay tobacco tin and they used to carry that with their tobacco. They'd use that uh, lens which is a six power lens and the sun to light their pipes and when there wasn't sun uh, in a condition like right now where the sun is set it's getting close to dark they had uh, the flint stone and a piece of carbon steel and uh, that black cloth is called char cloth and then some tinder. And the idea is to strike the carbon steel against the flint and direct the spark into the char cloth. Place the char cloth into your tinder bundle and blow it into flames. And uh, not nearly as easy as it sounds but anyway we're going to try and get a fire started. Let me demo this on camera first because uh, Catching that spark in the char cloth and then blowing it into an ember and then into flame is a delicate process that's not going to allow me to do camera work. But uh, anyway, there's your flint stone right there. And then uh, there's a piece of carbon steel. And then I've got a piece of char cloth. You can see the snow starting to fall. Anyway, let me adjust the camera and see if we can catch a spark. You're going to want to take that carbon steel and strike down on a sharp edge on the flint. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up. The sun has set and the light is starting to get a little iffy. But I've got that char cloth right on the edge. And uh, snowflakes are falling, so we'll see what we can do here. See that uh, spark caught in that char cloth? And uh, you transfer that charred cloth into your ember, into your tinder bundle, and blow into fire. And uh, that's what we're going to endeavor to do right now. now I've taken uh, birch bark, shredded it made a pile of that and then taken the real little dry wood laid on top of the birch and then I'm going to take this tinder bundle and put that spark hopefully that I can catch into the char cloth in there blow this into flame and then transfer it to that fire and get started That's completely 18th century there. Just birch bark, flint, carbon steel, 
char cloth. Winter snowing in the teens. It's amazing how a fire can take the chill out of the air around you. It's cold today. The sun is already set. I'm sure it's probably getting closer to the lower teens by now. That 18th century flint and steel method of building fire, you're not going to do with mittens on. That's a bare handed deal. Hi, bud. Does that fire feel good? Huh? Does that fire feel good? Yeah. I think we're about ready for some hot chocolate. What do you think? I think we're about ready for some hot chocolate. Want some hot chocolate? Once you've got your fire going, always take your fire equipment. In this case, the flint, steel, char cloth, tinder bundle, a little copper tobacco can that it's in. Put them all in there, put them in your day pack. That way they're there when you need them the next time. I just put together a tripod real quick. And I'm going to put the kettle on, boil some water, make a hot chocolate. Well, you might imagine as the sun has set that the temperature has also dropped. It's getting pretty frosty. I'm sure it's in the probably low teens by now, I would guess, and getting on towards dark. And I put the last of the firewood onto the fire, and I'm just going to sit by the fire and warm up a little bit and finish my hot chocolate, and then Hunter and I are going to go for a walk and get out of here. Hunter's laying in the snow where he can feel the fire. Come on, let's go. 